The state of Louisiana has allowed oil companies to abandon their wells, in many cases leaving little protection for residents still sleeping and playing near these discarded dangers. That is until our stories reveal the lack of rules and what that lax oversight did to a 14 year old girl. Off the court, around the rim. 14 year old Zaley Day was an A student on the honor roll. She loved the library. She loved knowledge. She started reading books at the age of three. She was fun. She was purposeful, direct. She knew. She knew what she wanted to do before she did it. And today we're just going to be hang, hanging out. Zaley dreamed of becoming a lawyer, then a judge. But with big plans in the future, she still showed her innocence, acting out scenes from her favorite Shakespeare play, her stage, These Abandoned Oil Tanks. She loved Romeo and Juliet. It was her thing. And those tanks were her towers. You know, she'd climb on top of them and act, act like she was in Juliet. Those tanks became a neighborhood playground of sorts. And you said there were kids all, all the time. All the time there were kids playing on this. I mean, there were police officers that drove right down there to that trailer when kids were playing on this. The neighborhood thought the oil company that owned the tank and well, Urban Oil, plugged and abandoned, or PA, the well. The Bullguard police officers would come right through this location. Kids were playing here, and nobody ever said anything because everyone assumed it was a dead well. Everyone assumed it was a PA well. But it wasn't, and on February 28th of this year, Zaley's life ended. Okay, it blew up 200 feet, went that away, arched over that away, 400 yards, flew over the two-story house back there, flew over the trailer, landed in the pasture behind it. Zaley was alone, playing in the tanks. We're about to show you surveillance video of the explosion from a nearby church. We want to warn you, processing what Zaley's father just said with this video may be disturbing, but the family wants you to see what happened to their little girl. She went 200 feet in the air and 400 yards in distance. She, her body was so crushed, we had to have a coat closed cast it. Urban Oil told us in a statement there were warning signs on the site prior to the accident, alerting the community of the potential danger, writing there was a no trespassing sign and notice to keep off the tanks. Urban Oil sent us these pictures as proof, though metadata connected to this picture shows it might have been taken at a different location. Zaley's family disputes Urban's claims and says the landowners gave everyone permission to roam their property, adding she and the other kids weren't trespassing, the tanks had no signs, there was no fencing. Zaley was a very smart law-abiding child. If there had been signs saying explosives or something warning her, she would have stayed away from her. There was nothing at all, nothing. The well owned by Urban Oil was not plugged because it's on a special list that allows essentially abandoned wells to stay unplugged. The state calls them shut-in future utility wells, which are inactive. But instead of plugging these wells after being listed as a shut-in for five years, operators can pay the state a $250 annual assessment to keep them on the list. The companies are telling the state they might be of future use. Right now, the state has around 18,000 of these wells, including the one that killed Zaley Day. Nearly half of these wells have been on this list for more than 10 years. But we know the longer a well stays in that shut-in status, the more likely it's going to be that way forever and possibly end up with us. And there are some wells that have been shut-in wells for decades. Yes. I mean, it's basically an orphan well that hasn't been plugged. That's kind of how we see it, too. The state has set up a system that essentially makes it more affordable to label a well as a shut-in instead of plugging it. The lower end of plugging a well costs about $50,000. A company could instead pay that $250 fee every year, and it would take 200 years, about two lifetimes, to reach that $50,000 cost. So these can just go on and on and on. As long as they've got an operator who's maintaining them within the rules. What's the motivation to plug the well? There is no motivation. There is no motivation. 
look at the map. These wells are all over the state. Here's a massive set of tank batteries in St. Mary Parish, another in Acadia Parish. We found this well in St. Charles Parish. Shut in wells in 57 of the state's 64 parishes. And right now the state has no existing regulations to warn residents of potential dangers. That's ridiculous for you to have to have, or myself to have to have a fence around a swimming pool, state law, but you don't have to have one around an explosive volatile oil field site. What happened here? Why wasn't the state forcing companies to do that? Previously, best since we can come up and looking at, because I mean, this has been what it's been. One thing we've been doing over the past five, six years is trying to bring a lot of old policies up to date to try to make them what they might should have been all along. The state hasn't even inspected some of these shut in wells in over a decade. Back in October of last year, instead of plugging and abandoning the well that killed Zaley Day, Urban Oil decided to place it on this list. I hope the, the oil company, and frankly, I hope the politicians too. I, I, I don't mean to be ugly, I'm just. It's like there were no guidelines. There was no boundaries. Zaley's father, Maxwell Smith, worked on oil fields for 30 years. But Zaley was only here to visit us. She was, uh, she was too good and uh, for her to go that quick and that fast. He says the industry that put food on his table has left him unable to work. Two parents left with these horrifying images and a teenage daughter gone too soon, too young. I rode bulls, I raced motorcycles, I did all kinds of things, but I can't seem to shake this. I haven't worked since it happened. Um, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know, you, your mind just goes on you. Um, I went through red lights thinking about just, my mind will be in a, a, a cloud and I'll just drive through a red light. It's just not right. It's just so unfair. I see her big smile. She was going to make a difference. She already did make a difference in everything. Following our story, the state of Louisiana proposed new rules that would force companies to secure their sites, requiring fencing and warning signs around tank batteries like the one that killed Zaley. The cost is, is somewhat minimal of, of putting a fence and, and things like that around these tank batteries. Compared to the cost of losing another life like this, yes. So in your mind, it's, it's, the company should pay for this and it's, it's worth it to do? It's just it's a matter of safety, yes. Jerry Perkins wrote a letter in support of the new rule. She read part of it for us. The death of Zaley rocked my family and friends. She was too young to die, let alone die such a violent and sudden death. Perkins' nephew was friends with Zaley. She urged lawmakers to support the new requirements. We needed a fence and a sign. We employ you implore you, you are the lawmakers, do something. The State Department of Natural Resources sent the new rules to lawmakers. A legislative committee signed off and in late November, these new rules were adopted, essentially becoming part of state law. A change Maxwell Smith hopes will prevent any other parent to go through the pain he suffered over the past 10 months, a pain caused by a discarded danger. There's no true way to describe the pain. I was in a grave at four o'clock this morning. Um, I couldn't sleep. I got up and I went out to her grave and just talked with her. I told her what I was going to do. And I'm trying my best to be able to look up, you know, and know that she's proud of me. You know, that her life wasn't wasted for nothing. 